Okay, I am going to record how I do this so then I can actually save it and then um, you can refer back to it when you're painting a piece. Um, I have a lot of projects I'm working on right now and this is the table I am going to paint today. I got this table at a thrift store. It's structurally sound. It had all the wheels and look at all the detail that it has on it. Um, I could not pass it up. It was a great price. There are some imperfections, just like everything I pick up. It's not going to be a perfect piece. Um, to fit the style I love and to fit the style of our home or uh, what I've always done, this is how I've decorated our house. Um, to get the look I want, but without spending a ton of money. It's, um, I've done this for years since we've owned our first house. This is how I wanted to decorate our house like I'd seen in magazines and um, on TV shows. But then I started to, after we got our first house, I went, started shopping for that. And then I figured out our budget is not going to um, allow me to just decorate like I see on the shows and in the magazines. So I had to get creative. And so... I have, through the years, this is how we have DIY'd our home, our decorating, our um, our flip houses that we are now starting to do, and uh, now I get to share these projects and do these projects full-time with you guys, which is a blessing, and I love doing it. So I'm trying to figure out, I always get questions about furniture and how I do it, and I've written a gajillion blog posts about it, but I thought I would start recording these um, so then you can kind of see it in action. I've done a lot of videos too, but I just thought I'm just going to kind of do these real time and then this might help. So the first thing with this piece is it's an all wood piece and it's kind of the um, finish, like the top coat is kind of worn off. So I am not, all I did was dust this piece basically, just kind of cleaned it up uh, before I'm going to paint it here. I'm going to use, oh, it's kind of, I'm outside in the garage, so it's, um, I'm going to use Dixie Bell cotton, and I love Dixie Bell. I, I here's one of the questions I get all the time: Are you going to prime? Do you prime every piece you do? Nope, not all the time. Dixie Bell paint makes it so you don't have to do it. There are certain pieces um, that I will share because I actually have some that I need to work on here soon that I will share and I will record that I would use their Dixie Bell's Boss product. It's called, and that would. Um, I would put that on before paint and that would prevent any bleed through or um, uh, it also like blocks odor, bleed through and oh my gosh, I'm going to forget the last thing. But I like it because on some of the shinier pieces I do where the finish hasn't really dulled like this one, it it makes the piece feel like raw wood and it just, the paint just sticks better and it and I just like it. But for this particular piece, nothing Dixie Belle paint this paint is just going to cover it not in I'm not saying it'll cover it in one coat some pieces it does but it will I don't need to prep this anymore I don't need to sand it I don't need to put a primer coat on Dixie Belle paint's amazing for that so all I'm going to do like I said is I washed this and kind of dusted it and let's see if I can figure this out here, I might have to read you guys. I usually work out in the garage. It's I'm trying to make sure the glare is not horrible. There's a little mess back here with Matt stuff, but this is real life. This is how I do it. I have to have my sunglasses on. So, and I'm just on a little scooter, a scooter. No, I'm not. I'm on a little stool that just kind of rolls around. So it's kind of, it makes it easier. So like I said, I am going to use, whoa, cotton this time um, from Dixie Belle paint. And I'm going to use, you guys have seen in, my zebra, is that backwards for you guys? <laughs> zebra brush, I'm going to use the square brush. That's just a little cover. Um, it is angled like this because I, it's a smaller piece and there's a lot of details. And I wanted to do this piece white because I wanted these details to really pop out. So when I shake the paint up, there's always paint on the lid and I always, 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 um, just want you guys to see this. I always, always, always use what's in my lid. This, there's a lot of paint in this lid and I, I'm not going to waste any paint. So I'm just going to start on the, the side here, not the corner, the side. And you guys, every time I use these brushes, I just take a minute because 
these brushes, if you do any projects like this, these brushes are made for us. These brushes, there are tons of different kinds um, that they have. They have angular brushes, they have triangle brushes, they have square brushes. My absolute favorite brush from Zebra is the Palm Pro. And um, I will leave links in this post and uh, down below for to get it. Uh, the Palm Pro, if you, could, if you could only buy one, that is the one I would suggest. It fits perfect. I have smaller hands and so it fits perfect. And it, like I use it for trimming walls. It's, it's just a dream. So, um, but today I wanted to use this square brush. So, okay. I just wanna show you this. I'm hoping this is gonna work. It's kind of, there's kind of a glare. If I touch that. With one coat of paint, you can already, and I haven't even got in all the crevices yet, you can already see the detail looks so much better. So, um, that's why I love painting pieces like this. And this piece is not like a rare antique. I, I always get questions about that. Um, if I were to go into an antique store and find a painted piece like this, I would be paying hundreds and hundreds of dollars but shopping at thrift stores and yard sales, I find them for a lot cheaper because they don't look that great. And then I can come home and customize them exactly how I want for a fraction of what it would cost to go get this in an antique store. Okay, so another tip I'm gonna share. Okay, you guys can see that where I am. Okay, when you come to these edges or even down here, even up here, you wanna be light-handed, so meaning um, you want to, sorry, a neighbor was just going by. You, when you come to the edges, you'll paint them, but then you want to make sure you don't have a bunch of overage in the, on the edge, if that makes sense, because paint will collect here around the edge if you've got too much paint. And then, um, you can always sand them out. You can, but it's just, I always try to be careful around the edges so that I'm not getting that big like bead of paint around the edge, if, that's, if that makes sense. Again, you can always, always, always um, sand them out. It's not a big deal. And I definitely, because this piece has so much detail, I will definitely be distressing the detail so it, it, it pops even more. So um, like I said, and though the bead of paint, if there are some, is some that around the edge, that's where I'm going to sand. So it, it, it's not that big of a deal. If you had just a plain, if you were going to leave this all just white, then you just want to be real careful around the edges that you don't have an extra bead of paint. Okay. So, I mean, how easy was that? I think a lot of people, I just, a lot of people get scared to even start painting, but, um, I want to encourage you to start. I always tell people, um, go to a yard sale or a thrift store and pick up a wood piece that is not, okay, I'm gonna try and move this, sorry guys. Pick up a wood piece that's not so big. So think like a little wood stool or a, um, uh, you know like those magazine holders that are wood, um, don't get something with a ton of spindles if you can. Uh, just something with flat edges and flat uh, flat sides. Sorry, I just hit the camera. To, to work on first. Those pieces, you know, you're not gonna spend a lot of money and it's a good way to just practice paint. Painting and, and edges and, okay, so here's a good example. I'm gonna lift this camera and show you, I hope. Okay, can you guys see what happened here? So right there, around every edge, you just wanna be careful, and all you gotta do is just smooth it out. You just wanna be careful that you don't do that. So if you're working on this side and you paint all the way over here, make sure you check over there too, even though you can't see it from here. Just always run your brush over there. I'm trying to do it for the camera, so I'm... <laughs> so, now I'm just, you guys, I just go back and forth. I'm not worried. I know this piece is gonna need a two coats for sure, um, maybe a third, but um, I'm not worried about direction or 
I mean, I go in the same direction, but just pick a direction. You're going to, you're going to go this way. I'm going this way because of the, the camera, uh, but just stay in that same direction. Um, I like to go in full brush strokes up here on the edge. I'm trying to be careful. Full brush strokes, um, just to get better coverage. And I'm just, I'm wiping that edge, like I said, just to make sure, um, there we go, okay. Just to make sure I don't have a bead of paint on that other side. Same thing here, I'm just being light on the edge and then I'm wiping this way um, to, whoops, sorry. Same on this, I'm wiping this way to clean up that edge after I get painted the other way. Okay, I'm gonna move my paint over here just cause I'm running out of room. And I don't put, here I'll show you, I don't put a ton of paint on my, on my brush. I always, I always dip it and wipe off that bottom part um, with any brush I use. this is working this is easier it's because it's a smaller piece too i'll have to figure out how to video the other pieces better i might have to have one of the kids out here so they can kind of help me um so i'm over here now and i can check that side but since i swiped along here i have no excess paint around the edge And there is a kind of a line down the center of this table. So I'm just trying to cover all of that. And so this is different than the way I'm going. So you can see that line, don't get nervous. You're gonna do a whole nother coat of paint. You can go back over like this and straighten it out, but um, don't get nervous. And for your first time and before you know, um, Kind of before you get a feel of it if you get a bunch of paint in one area if you're today it's humid it's humid out here so i'm trying to work a little faster so it doesn't dry faster than i can move it but paint is pretty forgiving as soon as you put it on you can kind of maneuver it and if it's you know if it's ideal conditions outside or wherever you're painting in the house you know you, you've got a little time that you can if you've got excess paint you can still push it around and make sure it's not uh it's not too thick in one area. So you don't ever wanna paint a piece like this, like, you know, you don't wanna do, you want to cover it with paint. And you wanna have enough paint on your brush so you're covering it, but yet you're not saturating it, if that, if that makes sense. Okay, top is done, you guys. Quickly, quickly, quickly. It does not take long. Okay, we can see that this is just the other side. Just This is what makes me excited. When I see, it's like, it's just the detail. And I put any color paint. I knew the lighter the paint color I did on this one, the better. Um, the better the details were going to pop out. If I were to do black, which I love painting pieces black. Um, I just didn't think, even if I distressed it, I just didn't think it would do it as much justice as I knew a lighter color wood. So that's why I went with the cotton from Dixie Bell Paint. And as you guys can tell, you guys, I didn't prime this piece. I just washed it and dusted it, you know. Uh, Dixie Bell Paint covers so well. It makes my life with these projects so much easier. Um, if you're looking for a good paint to start with, you guys, uh, here, when we, when I first started doing this, when we bought our first house, our budget was so tight. So I was using, whoops, so you guys can see, and I will get paint all over myself. <laughs> um, I was using whatever paint I could find. Like if we painted a bedroom or painted a room in the house, um, I would use that paint, just the wall paint. Um, I would also go to like our local home and like Menards, Lowe's, Home Depot. And I would look through their mist, 
matched paint where you could get like a half gallon for a dollar or they still do that or a full gallon for five bucks. And that is the paint I used. It is not until <laughs> um, I just, and I'm not saying you can't use those paints at all, but once you find things like, like Dixie Belle paint, where you're not having to prime and you're not having to sand a whole piece or um, the paint is made to cover pieces like this in, in a couple coats or one coat, depending on what you want the finish to look at, look like, it makes your life so much easier. The same goes for paint brushes. In the beginning, I literally, I would go, our budget was so tight. So I have used the cheapest brushes that I could find at my local, you know, Menards or Lowe's or, and that's what I used forever. The thing about that though, is that they never lasted. I would be brushing, you know, pieces and I would have the bristles from the brush end up in the piece. It was so frustrating. So then I would have to go back and um, sometimes I'd like miss it. I wouldn't see it. And I would have to go back and uh, sand the whole piece then again and <laughs> redo it. So investing in, if I could tell, one thing I've learned is that um, investing in good, sorry, I had to take a drink, good, uh, good products like paint and um, tools like paint brushes, it's going to save you time and money in the long run. I'm just being, I have, we have learned the hard way. Uh, we have bought the cheapest tools and within like the one project we bought it for or, or a couple projects down the road, they didn't work or we were buying new. Uh, and so we were just, we were wasting money or spending just what it, we would have if we would have bought a tool, you know, a little more, a little more expensive, but it would have lasted us forever. So that's my little tip. I can't say enough about these brushes and the Dixie Belle paint. It just... It works so good. It does make your life easier. So there we go. There's the top. Um, so the top half is done. To do the bottom legs and stuff, I like to set it up on a table. So I will set that up and then I will record that too. So hang on. I believe I found this piece still with all of its wheels on it. There's usually a wheel missing, but it had all of them. So now I'm just gonna work on the legs. Same thing, I'm gonna go with the direction. Well, to start off, go any direction, because I know I'm gonna have to do another coat on this one, but the square brush, again, I like the, the width of it. It's not huge, but it's gonna help me get into all these crevices um, easily. Again, when you're working with corners, like right here, you wanna make sure there's not a bead of paint uh, on the corners. You wanna make sure that those are smooth. And you can sand them out if you get it or they come out pretty easily, especially if you're gonna distress around the edges. Um, okay, so look. Yeah, I for sure, as I'm doing this and I'm looking at all of the detail here, these like leaves, petals. Um, I know I want to distress this so that I can bring those out even more. You know what? I'm wondering if I, okay, I just shut the garage door and turned on the light. I just felt like there, well, it's still kind of, if I stand here, then there's not so much of the glare. Okay. It's the glare from the sunshine today. So... Okay, I'm going to stop talking because it's the same process kind of all the way around and I will just record, I will just record the painting.
The top has dried, so now I flip over a table. This is what I do with a table. I'm um, already pieces where, you know, there's an underside. Usually a dresser, I can get underneath it. Not, I'm not flipping over a dresser. I can get underneath it. So all of this underside, you can't kind of see it when it's upside right. And so if I flip over the table, I can get all these details that um, I wasn't able to get to or didn't notice when I was painting it right side up. And then you can get all of the underside of the legs and in the middle and all that. I typically do not paint this part of the table. I will paint maybe the lip of the table, but otherwise underneath here, I don't paint it. Uh, but you are more than welcome to. It just depends on what you want. So I am just gonna continue getting the underside of these legs. Flipped it back around. I'm sorry, this lighting is so bad, you guys. I'm gonna have to figure out something, but um, maybe wait for a not such a sunny, bright day and then I can just have the garage door open and then it won't glare so bad. So now what I do, I've, I did the underside and now I flipped it back over and I'm just checking my edges everywhere. Just so that I make sure I don't have that bead of paint, like I said, um, my brush is dry. I mean, there's no, extra paint on it. I'm just checking all of these edges just to make sure that I don't have any excess bead of paint. Turn this um, oh, yep. See, there's one. Can you see that there? Oops. Yeah. So then I'm just going to smooth that out. And if you work quickly, and again, depending on what the temperature is outside, if you're painting outside or, um, um, or inside, you, you should have enough time to get to them um, um, after you flip it over or... So now this first coat, it's thorough, but it's not like I see some spots up here um, where some of the wood is coming through. It's not like it's pure, like it hasn't been painted. I'm not worried about that. I'm gonna let this fully dry, fully dry. If you're doing a couple coats, make sure um, another tip right here, put your lid on your paint, been there, done that and left the paint and then like got, came back to the project a day later and the paint was still open. Anyway, um, if you are doing a couple of coats on a piece of furniture, the first coat or the previous coat needs to be fully dry before you start, um, painting your other coats on because if not, you're just the paint will be halfway dry or somewhat dry. And when you go to put another coat on, you're ripping off the first layer of paint as you're painting on a new layer and it's just no good. The finish is gonna look horrible. So this is probably my hardest point because I my patience is, you know, 
something I always say I'm working on, but it needs to be fully dry before you add another coat. So go in the house, do something else, um, and then come back to it later on when you know um, it's fully dry and then you can add your second coat. Okay, you guys, I think we are in business and I think this is gonna work. The sun has actually gone down and so I moved so there's not such a glare. Yay, okay, I'm gonna be able to do this. I'm learning. Okay, so the, I'm going to I'm going to put on the second coat on this on this table. It's completely dry and every time before I open any paint, I always shake it. Even if you've just, you know, it's been a couple just a couple hours, I always shake it just in case it just sometimes it'll settle and so you just want to shake your paint really well. Again, since I shook it, I always use the paint in the lid first. Number 1 because there's always a bunch of paint in here that I don't want to uh, waste and secondly because it'll clean out the inside of your lid so you don't get this all gunked up um, when you close it if you you know what I mean <laughs> okay so I am just going to go right over this again and I'm going to paint give it another coat everywhere that I've already been been over
Okay, I am now going to sand this table, and I like to use a rotary sand sander. Um, it spins in circles, and I'm using 240 sandpaper. Um, I always start with a new piece of sandpaper, unless it's really, like I hadn't really used it at all. But I start with a new uh, piece, and then I just, I'm going to try and hold this camera, and I won't talk when it's on, but I just move back and forth in the direction of the wood grain, and then that's how I do it, so... easier for me to reach the legs. I just wanted to show that your sandpaper will get kind of gummy um, and like there's no, it's not coarse at all anymore. So it's time for me to uh, change out the sandpaper. But when I distress it like this, I just love the way it just adds so much more character to the piece and on the edge, I just let it go as it comes off. Um, that's, it's, there's no, you don't want it to look uniform. You know, you don't want it to chip and come off uh, all in the same places because then it won't look um, authentic. You want It's going to chip and, and come off in different places. And I kind of put more pressure around the edges where it would naturally ding or, you know, bump into a wall or whatever, um, where it would naturally wear over time. So I do do that. But other than that, I just kind of go over it up and down until I get a look that I like and then I move on to the next side or the next leg or the next um, whatever. But now it's time to change the sandpaper. Um, pieces like this, I always fold the sandpaper kind of, um, well this one I will, just kind of fit it around your hand so it's easier to, I, I'm doing this left handed so this isn't gonna work. But then I just kind of go around it, uh, around the edges and stuff, just kind of folding the sandpaper just so it fits better in my hand and then for like pieces and areas down here, I just fold it a little tighter and then go in those edges um, down here, like that.